I, I just have a couple quick questions for the author. So, uh, conversion therapy is legal, correct? Uh, currently, uh, for practice, as as you know, in 2012, the state passed the law um, to ban conversion therapy for minors 18 and under. Uh, but for adults, so the the testimony earlier, uh, uh, your testimony was not uh, would not be illegal today. They couldn't put you through the marbles in the mouth and other items under current law, correct? Uh, currently, that that is still p possible. Okay, so um, so if you're an adult, because conversion therapy for minors is not on the table, and you are seeking that help, and we know the suicide rates are extremely high, uh, why would we not want them to have access to care that they choose? Nobody's forcing them to take that, right? They're 18 and older. So no one's forcing them, and if they think that that's a path that's going to keep them sane, why would we oppose that? Under current law, individuals are still able to seek any type of treatments or modalities that you've already heard from practitioners. But what we're saying is that when there's a financial transaction, we already know that scientific data has indicated that this is not only harmful, but it does not work. So under a financial transaction, we want to ensure that there are the protection in place for consumers in the state of California. But additionally, should an individual seek to be changed specifically, they can do so, but under no cost. Well, it's not at no cost because you're forcing them to go to a synagogue or a church. You're forcing them to go, if they're an atheist, against their will. Uh, and you're forcing them to have this therapy uh, by somebody who's not necessarily a licensed practitioner, right? I mean, me licensed mental health provider. So to me, this is, you're li really limiting people's choices at seeking help for themselves. On the, on the flip side, if a person were to advertise helpful to those looking to question, would that, would that be going over the line or would that be, or would that be okay? Madam Chair, may I please, Mr. Sampson? Um, please, yeah. From my understanding of the scenario you just laid out, Senator, uh, that would be okay. Again, you need to cross over that threshold of seeking to change one's sexual orientation. And um, as Senator Hertzberg mentioned, you know there is this long definition of what it what it does not include, and that includes you know, coping, social support, identity exploration. So you can have these discussions walk through it with a therapist, the pastor, whoever you need to, and talk about it, talk about your concerns, and seek some help. But again, the moment that that help crosses that threshold of seeking to change that individual's sexual orientation, that's where the provisions of this bill apply. But anything short of that is so, very much permitted. So, um, through the chair, if I may. So if I advertised, helpful to those looking uh, uh, with, with confusing thoughts. And they come in and they say, this is where I am and this is where I want to be. And you're, because you're charging, you can't offer them the therapy that they're looking for. Would you be able to do a referral? Would you be able to say, you, I cannot do it because I charge for it, but here are all the local uh, religious facilities that offer this, would you be able to do that under this law? Yeah, because the offering of it, the advertising, it has to be in exchange for, for dollars. That, but, that but is part they, of the Consumer Legal Remedies Act. They paid for the appointment, so the referral into itself, though, would that, would that lend that practitioner in, uh, that provider in, in, in a lawsuit? Senator, if I'm understanding your question correctly, you're asking by virtue of paying the individual who put out the advertisement um, for that appointment, the individual says, well, uh, you know, I can't perform those services 
for you because you're paying me. However, you can go elsewhere and let me give you a list who don't charge for it. If the if the if the money is is again transferred to the individual who had had put out that advertisement that you mentioned but never performed sexual orientation change efforts, then the dollars aren't being exchanged to the individual providing the service. So I don't see why that would be a problem. But I would be leading to their service of getting the actual treatment and I, I, I guess we would be testing this in court. So then the next question that comes is, you know, a lot of times faith-based ministries are laser focused on whatever that ministry may be, maybe working with alcoholics. It may be working with unifying families after they've broken up. Uh, if they went with this conversion therapy, we know that uh, sometimes licensed providers will offer services to their church to help. Would this put them in jeopardy? Now, I'm going to add a twist to it because I know personally that I feel very strongly about the life issue, and I, my wife and I donate to pro-life causes, pro-life ministries, for the specific pur purpose of respecting life. So if I turned around and got this therapy, and I was so delighted with it, I made a sizable donation to that ministry. And that's a licensed provider who gave me that mental health. Would that now, where would that fall with this law? I appreciate the question. And as you know, uh, Senator, a, a lot of it depends on um, uh, a, a lot more facts. Um, but, but again, if you're... <laughs> If you are going to, if it's a donation, again, if it's a donation and the purpose is not to receive, again, the, the dollars are not to receive the sexual orientation change efforts and there's no nexus between the payment provided and the service received. Are there, are there any other legal services uh, that we have prohibited advertising for in California like this? Are there, is this, is this, I couldn't find anything. So is there something else that we also, that's a legal service that we no longer allow to advertise? So there's a list of about 27 um, items under the Consumers Legal Remedies Act that have been deemed by the legislature to be deceptive or fraudulent. Um, that's the, again, the act that this- But those are legal services that you're speaking of? Legal services? Yeah, we established that conversion therapy is a legal service. No, that's not what it says. They're unlawful services under uh, uh, 72, what is it, 17200. There are 27 different kinds of business transactions that have been deemed to be fraudulent um, and thus uh, fall under that provision. So that's, that's the question. They're not necessarily legal services. They're services that are deemed uh, to fall within the unfair business practice, which is what this is. And if I may, um, th to answer the question, if you make a contribution to your church, that's a contribution. That's not a payment. There's a distinction to be drawn. So I think that answers that question. And then part of what we're talking about here is if someone were to hold themselves out as to be able to change your sexual orientation, that is what the issue is in this bill. If you make those representations, if you make a promise that you can change someone's sexual uh, orientation and do so for compensation, that is the narrow uh, restriction within this bill that would then bring into play um, the unfair business practices provision. So that should answer your question. So with that, Chair, no, um, with that we're gonna we're gonna excuse me we're gonna Chair, allow Chair, we're gonna allow Chair, Senator Chair, Lowe, uh, Lowe to excuse me Chair, excuse me we're gonna allow Chair, Senator we're gonna allow Chair, Assemblyman Lowe to Chair, close and then we're gonna take a vote. We're gonna allow him to close. Excuse me. So I we're gonna you ex have a excuse me. Process, but you don't allow senators to speak. Now I have one. Last you question. you have asked uh, have, many questions, allowed, senator. Senator, if, if you have one, sh and you you have had the last question. No. You were the last one to speak. So if you have a quick question, we'll do it. But otherwise, it's four o'clock. We have twelve other bills to do. We have a, a given this a, a good deal of hearing. One quick question, sir, and then we're going to go on and have the assembly member close. 
Senator Anderson. Uh, sadly, I have now forgotten it. Uh, well, <laughs> perhaps there's a, um, a reason. Oh, I know. That. I know. All right, quickly, quickly, okay. sir. Actually, Madam Chair, you might be able to answer this. So, if if uh, those other 27 items are those are uh, unlawful acts, this is the first time I believe that this is a lawful practice. We don't ban it. We ban it for under 18 year olds, but we don't ban it for uh, over 18. Would this be the first time that we have not allowed? In in look, I get that. No one says I'm going to cure your cure you from drug addiction. No one says they're going to cure you from alcoholism because it's a constant battle your entire life. You never get cured. You always work to be ahead of it. So the question is, if a person offers those services, uh, would they still be allowed to offer those services, or is this the first time that we've had something that is legal in providing? over 18 year olds, but are not allowed to advertise. Well, I think the distinction here is we're making this an unfair business practice that complies under the provisions of uh, 17200. And medically proven to be damaged. And, thank you, and that it also, part of the reason that this bill, I believe, has been brought, and I'll ask you to close with that, is that the data all shows medically that, that, that these promises of sexual, uh, changing of sexual orientation um, are, do damage, that they are, there's no um, medical basis for that representation, which is the reason this is being brought.